Go ahead and roll for perception. I got an 18. Ooh, 18 is really good. With that, you can see some advertising space available. So you're telling me if I have a product, YouTube channel, or podcast that I want advertised, I could do it here? That's right. And you can get more details by emailing thedungeoncast at gmail.com. Awesome. I'll have to do that. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm Will. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, from chilling choices to charming charisma. And today we're talking about changelings. <laughs> All right, Brian. What do they change into? A lot of things. Many, First, we many have to know things. what they were. What are they changing from? It's um, most from, important. From themselves? What does that mean? <laughs> so D&D changelings are humanoids that, as their name would imply, change the shape, form, and visage to that of other humanoid species and gender. Um, they can do so as quick as thinking and uh, as often as they like. Hi, my name's Sarah, and uh, I change. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, changelings are an Eberron-specific race, though I think it's fairly common for DMs to include them regardless of setting. I know I do. Okay. Um, it's we're said back in Eberron. We're back in Eberron, yeah. Hey. So, <laughs> so it's said that uh, the race of changelings came about via the union of doppelgangers and humanity, um, eventually separating into their own current distinct species that breeds true. Uh, it's left rather vague, and there's kind of some inconsistencies to this explanation due to, like, doppelganger lore. So before we get into further into changelings, I should probably explain doppelgangers to you. Okay. So doppelgangers are not setting specific. Um, They are devious and self-centered, shape-shifting, humanoidish monsters. Uh, In their true form, they appear to be these genderless, tall, gray-skinned humanoids with like over-large alien-esque eyes, a gaunt, like almost skeletal, slender physique. Those Slenderman, I was going to say. Kind of, and like gangly limbs. They, they look like aliens. They look rather bizarre. Okay. Um, they have a nasty reputation for being hedonistic self-servers with a really strong blue-orange morality spectrum. Okay. Um, they're just very alien-minded. Uh, they invade communities in disguise with, disguise with stolen identities uh, and tend to swindle, seduce, and rob said community blind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they will murder without a second thought if it serves their needs um they are mercurial by nature they never stay in the same place for very long any children begotten of their escapades are left with the non-doppelganger parent and the child will appear as whatever race its non-doppelganger parent is until it comes of age at which point it just becomes a doppelganger oh, that's like hags it's kind of like hags it's yeah. like hag babies i was going to say they, they sounded a lot like the silence until you started getting into like all of the very forward physical evils um the silence from doctor who um, oh I don't know. I don't know what that is. I'm not. I'm not too familiar with dog. By not too familiar, I mean not familiar at all. I mean they they manipulate society in a, in I guess adjacent similar way mm-hmm. to the what you described. I thought of them. I immediately cast it out, but I thought I would mention it anyway for some oh, reason. For sure. Yeah, doppelgangers are more uh, just really short sighted and self serving. Again, they just don't think like normal people, and they just don't have a morality. It's not that they're outright evil. It's just that they just don't consider morality a thing what if there was a really famous doppelganger and like another doppelganger like impersonated them a goppelganger <laughs> no <laughs> just no so this the, the inconsistency for me when it comes to changelings is that doppelgangers actually breed true when a doppelganger has a kid it's a doppelganger okay so and it, like i said it's just left vague it's not really clear how the changelings became who and what they are because they're not like doppelgangers okay but let's get into it Chainlings can look like anyone at any given time, but they do have a true form, which is both striking and vague simultaneously. Um, they have a uniformly pale white skin. Um, they have white pupilless eyes that are very slightly over large and often are sunken in like dark rings. So like like kind of like black tinged all around. Sure. Between their eyes is the subtle suggestion of a nose. Um, and beneath that, a set of barely discernible lips. Their faces look like blurry, unfinished paintings. Um, their hair is thin and often shock white, but silver and blonde is also common. Um, they range in height anywhere from five to six feet tall, and their builds are quite slender, bordering on frail looking. Um, they lack both body and facial hair. So they're like people that are halfway not there. Okay. <laughs> Does that make sense? I mean, I'm into the no hair thing. For sure. But, <laughs> but their faces, like I was saying, it's almost like they're... It's like if you made a human face and then managed to just smudge it. Oh. So, like, you couldn't, like, there's a suggestion of a nose, but they don't actually have a nose. Like, you're in photo editor and you, like, use the blur tool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what it looks like. Okay. And that's just, that's what they naturally look like. Nice. Um, 
Yeah. So unlike most other races, changelings lack a unified culture or society. Due to their extreme unibility and the suspicion and mistrust they garner among the other races, um, yeah, they just haven't really had a chance to like develop a community. They're yeah. always kind of like in hiding. I'm too busy fucking 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 with stuff. Well, like no one trusts them and like Why would you? Why would you? Because like they have this innate power to be super goddamn deceiving. Yeah. And like if you look at them just through the eyes of humanity, like power tends to corrupt and that's quite the power to have. I mean, the first time anybody does anything even like slightly bad with it, yeah. I'm over all of it. I'm fucking right, done. Right, right, exactly. I'm like no yeah, you're all no. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very dangerous and very unnerving. I mean, what a what a thing to put in your campaign. Like, it's almost like it's semi challenging mm-hmm. in a way. Oh yeah, it's like there's uh there's Spider Man the animated series. It was like a, on Disney XD for a while, I think. Yeah, and there's this storyline where Peter Parker marries Mary Jane, but oh, she no. ends up being a water clone. Oh no! And I thought like, you were gonna say scroll. No, well, basically, though, I mean, like she turns it turns out she's a water a water clone. The real Mary Jane, like never like had that relationship with Peter Parker. Oh, and he's like, oh. he's destroyed. And yeah, he's got like, to start over. And like, yeah, apparently she I love a water know. clone. <laughs> yeah. And like the um, I think Flash Gordon is like the water bad guy. It turns into like the But he, he was a water into clone. hydro man. I think he's a hydro. I don't like this series. <laughs> I don't know if it was Flash Gordon, but he was a water clone. Also, that was weird. Yeah. It reminded me of that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there is a similarity there. That's for sure. Um, so because of all this mistrust, changelings have a serious lack of sense of belonging or place in the world. Uh, most live in hiding, scattered among communities dominated by other races. And unlike uh, other minority races that might band together to form a community, changelings are anything but unified. Uh, many view each other with the same suspicion and prejudice <laughs> that the rest of the world does. Nobody knows. Like, they don't trust each other. Nobody knows. Right. Exactly. Okay. So uh, generalizing the personality and psychology of a changeling is as difficult as doing the same with humans. But generally speaking, most changelings are prudent and cautious by nature. Uh, They only take risks when necessary. They kind of have to be this way because if they're not, they're going to get themselves in trouble, most likely. Okay. So their relations and approach to the other races tend to fall into one of three categories or philosophies, which we'll get into after the short rest. I need a nap. Hey everybody, welcome to the part of the show where we're not talking about the last thing we we're talking about. We're talking about this new thing. It's um love. It's springtime, there's love in the air. <laughs> it's um, true. <laughs> it's coming through the broadcast into your ears. That it is. And it's channeling its way into your into your mind and then into your bloodstream world and then filter through your heart. Indeed. And it just remember that when that's happening, it's it's you've now of me been well. indoctrinated. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> um, I, there's like subtle undertones of demon worshiping across our show, uh, including in the Discord. I think mostly in the Discord at this point. At this point, our Discord is nothing but a demogorgon cult. I I didn't mean it. <laughs> um, then, um, Speaking of which, you should join the cult. Check out our Discord. Check, Links in the description. Yeah, there's a link in the description. Thank you. Um, there has been a need for new mods, so uh, congrats to Degonzo. Congrats, Degonzo. Way to make it all the way up to admin, man. You rock. I don't pay attention enough to lots of things, yeah. and um, I what, I thought he was a mod. <laughs> well, you know, he was a mod. Now he's an admin. Oh, yeah. that's okay. So there's a difference. Oh yeah, I'm 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 Discord illiterate. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess it's mostly me and Jack kind of taking care of the Discord. By yeah. mostly me and Jack, I mean mostly Jack. It makes me feel yeah, it makes me feel so weird. So thanks, like, Jack. By the way, shout out to Jack. We yeah. don't shout you out enough. Thanks for handling the Discord, man. Thanks for making it. Thanks for making this awesome community possible. Um, and everyone on the Discord, you should thank Jack too because it's all because of him that that place exists. And thanks, thank you all to our mods and admins. Well, it. Okay, everybody back back the fuck up. It's all thanks to me that it exists because it? I, I made the thing, but then I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I, it just sat there for a long time. And then Jack came to us and then it was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Please, Jack, take this take this dying baby bird and, and make it into a beautiful. Well, I don't know if the one that you made is the one that's being used. I think so. I'm not sure it is because what? Jack has the little crown and we don't. Oh no! Yeah, so I think My life your, is yours is off somewhere in the ether. <laughs> it's just <laughs> I really don't. I wonder know. if there's anyone there. Like, hello? No, hello? <laughs> I, it's. I think I know. I, now that you say that, I think there is a place I can go where I'm by myself, where oh. I'm the one that's like, hello. 
<laughs> so yeah, that's that's your dungeon cast. I'm trying Discord. to tag people. It's not working. Where's that's all the threads? Fucking God, hilarious. I keep calling them threads. It's the channels, channels, man. I, channels. I'm so bad at Discord. So yeah, go check out the Discord. It's a great community. <laughs> and uh, I come in there and I heckle people sometimes. It's true. And I uh, I change the channel names at will because I have that power. You do? Yeah. Oh, okay. There's this whole thing. I know with you the have the power. Channel. I just haven't seen you. Have you been the one doing that? <laughs> I thought the mods were just making bold decisions. No, I was like, all right, was I'll me. let them do their it's thing. It's been me all along. All right. Well, Thank before you for calling them bold decisions. That's not how I was looking at them, but that's how I'm going to look at them now. Okay. Anyway, so, um, this has been our Discord podcast. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah, let's get back to the show. Okay. All right. Notable changelings in pop culture. Go. Uh, uh, I don't know. Mystique. Yeah, that's a good one. one Morph. Enough. Who? Morph. Morph? From X-Men the Animated Series. Morph. Oh, there's somebody named Morph? Are they Mystique? You, Morph is like an entire meme. Like Wolverine going, Morph. No, I missed oh, it. Oh, man. Yeah, no, he's he's like in the first episode and he dies. <laughs> No, well, no wonder I don't know. What the fuck. <laughs> but, but then he comes back. Then he comes uh, back later, and he's like super mentally damaged. So we both named X Men characters. Yeah, is there, yeah, is there another did. thread of? I mean, I'm sure there is. Uh, scrolls. There we go. Scroll. Oh, yeah, scrolls. scrolls. Yeah. yeah there we go. Um, much more menacing in the um, the comics than the book or than the movies. Um. Yes. Very um, much so. But that's spoilers, my dude. Kind of. Uh, <laughs> Not really. Let's okay. Back to Eberron. <laughs> so in Eberron, change, changelings tend to fall into uh, three distinct categories. Like uh-huh. I was saying before, short rest. Um, passers who endeavor to mingle with society and repress their mutability, becomers who embrace their mutability as central to their identity and take pride in changing both frequently and convincingly, and reality seekers who reject both these ideals and instead seek to find and define their identity as changelings in their natural and true form. Mm. So, pastors act to hide their changeling nature. Uh, in answer to the discrimination that changelings face from the other races, pastors avoid these conflicts and challenges altogether. Okay. They adopt a singular identity, uh, including their race and gender, and then they endeavor to live life that way without changing, save for in dire circumstances. So, they're writing off their abilities. Basically. Um, changelings that are pastors are likely just ordinary people just trying to live their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, they're members... They are members of their community that bear the fear of discovery, um, but otherwise likely live peaceful lives. Really <laughs> cool um, NPC like entry into like cool campaign territory thread. Yeah, C- campaign territory <clears throat> thread like where there's uh, somebody doing something evil in the town. They're mm-hmm. like the you know the lead banker, like the head of the bank or whatever, right. and you need to get into the vault to do whatever. But the lead banker is like a total dipshit. And the changeling person that's the passer is just like, <clears throat> I heard you're trying to get into the bank. Right. And they're like, this once. Right. <laughs> yeah. That would be awesome. So basically, passers are the ultimate method actors, right? Okay. Like yeah. they just, they get in the character and they never leave it. Right. I think, okay, so let's have a, a quick conversation about identity because identity is kind of the theme around changelings. Sure. Changelings that are passers, they're really opposed to changing from their identity. They aren't pretending to be the person that they're passing as. In their minds, that's who they are. They've chosen their identity right. and this is it. And they get, when they <clears throat> decide to do that, they get, to, within their means, of course, get to choose whatever that identity is. Yeah, exactly. It's said that pastors, like let's say a pastor that chooses to be a half-elf, um, they consider themselves a half-elf. Mm-hmm. And like they... Um, <clears throat> they vibe with other half elves about being a half elf, and they live <laughs> they live a half elf life. Are they at like a half elves only bar? Just <laughs> sure. like being a half elf's the best, right, and just sure. like really overselling it. My, my, yeah, <laughs> well, it is often that pastors will tend to like oversell their identity, kind of like because I think they feel a like guilt. For not being, yeah, the thing that they're trying lying. to be, they're yeah. actually li- just liars. they're actually lying. I, I will say this: like the thing about changelings is that they can be whatever they want, and although passers face discrimination <clears throat> from their own kind, like becomers and reality seekers, see, view passers with contempt for and calling them actors and pretenders. I actually disagree with this statement. And the reason being, like, the changeling's definitive power is being able to choose who they want to be. Right. Pastors have chosen who they want to be, and that's okay. That's who they are. I agree with that 100%. I think think this is, if you're, you know, if it's for the right reasons, I'm looking inward and saying, this is what I see, so Uh this is what I will become. Right. 
and there you go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like no reason to oversell it. You are you are that. You should be confident in that role. Exactly. But it's the it's the one like I picturing like the like no I'm an elf I swear like <laughs> no please I'm just a normal man. <laughs> please leave my yeah, house. Yeah. Tell everyone that I'm a boy. The very obvious <laughs> pastor. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, any questions about pastors before we move on? <clears throat> uh, no. Okay, so becomers uh, believe that to accept oneself and truly be a changeling, one must change. A becomer feels that they have many identities within themselves and wish to explore and stretch these identities. Uh, They sample many walks of humanoid life like a grand buffet. Uh, Though they change forms like changing clothes much of the time, there is a distinction in the kinds of forms that they choose. So the first form type that a becomer has in its arsenal it's called a mask this is a casual form change without any depth or history Uh, this is usually done for the sake of quick convenience or for an expression of mood either way it is a surface change without an identity it's just a mask Um, the second form type is called a persona personas are carefully crafted in detailed identities built around a specific appearance Uh, they have their own names histories personalities and set of skills etc it's important to note that these identities are important to becomers who see themselves simultaneously as both the mutable changeling and the persona that they're portraying okay Um, it's very often with becomers that okay so a becomer will have like this arsenal of personas right and let's say they're an adventure changeling they might have a rogue persona and go into their rogue persona when they're doing rogue yeah things. like i need to stealth and break into that safe exactly time to be uh john sneak john safe breaker yeah yeah john exactly Safebreaker. and like they might have trouble breaking into said safe if they're not in that persona Ooh, so these yeah. personas are very important to them. That's a really cool um, <clears throat> like campaign idea. If you want to be a changeling, you can change classes in the game. That'd be pretty cool. It's, That'd be broken, but I, that's a really fun idea. It, is it? It's broken if you if you don't as a dungeon master rise to the occasion. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I like, understand what you mean, but like also like you have to you have to put that in context of having other players. No, oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. But. Why not have all of them be this? That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be super cool. Like, I really like I the idea, where, and I, I think it could be pulled off. Like a bar fight? We're all fucking barbarians. <laughs> no, I really like that idea. That's super fun. That's rad. Um, so it's a great way to... What a great way to um, utilize all of the characters that we've all written and never played. I know. Now I can just be them all. Now I can just like, oh, man, cool. I've never been this rogue. Yeah. So, so Although for, I will say players have a hard enough time keeping... Uh, <laughs> keeping in context their own one character, having an arsenal might be very difficult to yeah, keep track of everything. What the fuck is the second hand attack bonus? No yeah. one even knows. Yeah, exactly. Everybody, everybody's gonna. How does concentration come. work again? Yeah, we those we forget <laughs> these certain things, and no matter how many, there's the problem with D and D is I can only sit down to play it every once in a while, mm-hmm. so it's really hard to like cognitively cement these ideas. Mm-hmm. in sometimes you have yeah. to study off off. I usually just like look at all my shit the day before and make sure I remember how it works. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you there. I feel you. Um, um, any questions about uh, becomers before moving on? I mean, I have I have much more broad general questions, so I'll wait till the end. Okay. Um, so reality seekers. So reality seekers are introspective and philosophical. Philosophical, F- philosophical, philosophical <laughs> um, changelings who seek to find an ideal form within themselves. They prefer their natural form and reject untruths and deceit in all facets of their lives. They seek to establish changelings as their own definitive people with a culture. They look with both envy and admiration upon the Warforged who struggle with the same issues and are actually making progress in solidifying their place in the world. That's what reality seekers want for changeling kind. What a reality seeker. I know it's inherently against what you just said, but like become a warforged. I don't think that's the one thing. I'm not sure if changeling can do that because warforged a- are artificial. I don't know what the official ruling oh, on that is. Oh, like they're they they can only change <clears throat> into they're not like mimics. They're like They're not like mimics. Right, yeah. Okay. Um and that's the thing is like warforged are made of like metal and wood. I don't know if they can fake that. You know what I mean? Yeah, the biology is more mechanical than yeah, biology. Exactly. Interesting. So I mean, maybe I don't know. I I, I didn't see that anywhere in the whole transformation. <laughs> We're bit. testing the boundaries in Eberron. <clears throat> I'm sure there's an Eberron like lore fan that's it. like, and it might they, they cover this and it this. might be explained in their change appearance feature, which we'll get into uh, when we get to the stats. Uh-huh. But um, but yeah, I'm not sure off the top of my head. Interesting. <clears throat> uh, where was I? 
Um, oh yeah, so that's <clears throat> reality seekers. They're the, the kind of the least explained of the three. Well, they're like the opposite of the passer, where they're like, I'm not. Well, they share similarities. Like, yeah. I'm not going to use my powers, but I'm not going to just assume a persona. Yeah. Uh, well, reality seekers, I think, are aren't like super opposed to using their powers for specific reasons, but they won't use their powers for like deceit. Right. So what a passer would do. Yeah. And they certainly when they change, they don't see themselves as this new identity. OK. Like, so they haven't like sworn off their abilities. Yeah. I would say like when it, when a reality seeker changes, it's only ever a mask and probably for as little time as possible. When that's why. Can you change into animals? Can you change into like a wolf? No. Um, humanoids uh, only. It gets explained in the change appearance feature. But yeah, they can only become humanoids. OK. Because I thought that <clears> would be cool to be like, well, I mean, you could become like a tabaxi they ha- or like an animal-like sure. humanoid that yeah. could help you with like hunting. You want to live in the wilderness off right. the grid or whatever. Yeah, although like taking the form doesn't actually like give them the stats of, of a tabaxi. They don't gain the senses of a tabaxi. Oh, they just look like they it. They just look like so it. So they just have their changeling stat. Yeah, exactly. Oh, interesting. That changes, okay. Yeah. That's, oh, so there's no point <clears throat> really in doing it. Yeah. In that, in, as a utility feature other right. than it's, it's designed to deceit. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, I know you haven't watched Steven Universe, but the the gems can change their form, but it doesn't change their power level. So even though like one of them might turn into like this really buff fighter, it doesn't actually make them stronger. Their stats stay the same. Then why do it? Um, <clears throat> for intimidation or just an expression. With the gems, it's a lot of times it's mostly about expression. So that could be where this comes <clears throat> in, is they're using their they're using their chain shape ability to express a f- emotion. Yeah, and they, that's what becomers do a lot of the time. But I could see reality seekers doing oh, that. This is a this can be a hilarious <clears throat> NPC where you're. Oh yeah, like, definitely. They're, when they're like, uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm above that, and they become an elf. Yeah, or like for that. Uh, you know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of Genie from Aladdin. Yeah, yeah where he's who, just like becoming the he visually representing what he's trying to tell exactly. you. Exactly, and I yeah. can see uh, reality seekers doing that. At least more um, less serious minded reality seekers, which is a cool idea. Okay, yeah, uh, it's really cool. This, wow, these are great NPCs. You can put them in like in the woods, like trying to find them. They're, all these philosophical questions and ideas that are being raised. You can go have those conversations with this guy you come across in the woods. Or whatever. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So the life cycle of changelings mostly matches up with that of humans, um, with the exception that they reach adulthood at about 15-ish, but they do live about 70 to 85 years or so. Okay. Uh, The children of a changeling couple is always a changeling. The pairing of a changeling and another humanoid has a 50-50 shot going either way. Most changelings do not gain full control over their transformation abilities until the age of two. And during that time, it's pretty early. They're going to. I mean, yeah, it is pretty early. Um, that being said, they do grow faster, so maybe two is more along like between age three and four in okay. natural human years. But during that time of not having control, they're going to be in their natural form and probably do random changes based off things they see. They're going to mimic that they see, what they see. Right. It's okay. very much like human babies with uh, without the changing powers. Obviously. It's like uh, <clears throat> this is okay. Sorry, Bob's Burgers again. Yeah. yeah go for um, it. But like, have you seen the episode where? G- Gene dresses up like Bob and he looks like little Bob. Yes, I have. That's a good episode. I love that. <laughs> this episode. reminds me of that. There's like yes. two dads walking around the house. Two but I, around. I imagine the size doesn't change much. Yeah, exactly. The size won't change. So but the, like they're gonna mimic the faces and expressions of that which they see. So if you want to be Todd the blacksmith mm-hmm. from in town, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you're but Todd is five foot and mm-hmm. your changeling form is six feet, is that mm-hmm. gonna be an issue? No, that won't be an issue. Uh adult changelings can change their size uh within a certain limit. They have to stay medium okay but they can get as big as like seven foot tall half orc they can do that mm, they can't be centaurs though they can't be centaurs though. unless they're 40 centaurs <clears throat> unless they're 40 centaurs what no why why it wasn't the 40 centaur a pony oh no sorry that was ravnica oh ravnica centaurs uh no they can't actually do that because they can't become quadruped that's very specific oh right you told yeah. me that already yeah. Whoops. but um but no that, well, that as good stands, thinking cannot though, because become... i forgot about the stupid ravnica centaurs <laughs> so thank you for reminding me about that oh. uh, <laughs> Okay. Anyways, any other questions about changelings before we get into their stats? I think we should have read the stats first. What do you mean? I think it would have curbed a lot of my questions. Like, no, oh, no, I think that's okay. Yeah? yeah okay, well, fine. I do want to hear it. Okay, so uh, changelings. Let's get into it. Um, so changeling, changelings gain a plus two to charisma and a plus one to either dexterity or intelligence. This is your choice. And that's useful. Yeah, b- both very that, useful. That makes yeah. total sense to me. And it makes sense to me mm-hmm. as well, yeah. I think uh, changelings are going to be very much the victims or the product of their environment. So, like, it's not like other races, again, who have cultures that you're probably going to come from. Uh, there's going to be some flexibility, and I like that. Okay, yeah, much more nature. 
than nurture. Yes, I would say so. Mm-hmm. Well, no, actually, uh, much more nurture than nature. Yeah? Yeah, that's that's kind of my point here, is they don't have a defined culture. They're going to be victims of whatever their environment is. So what their environment is going to be what nurtures them. Nature would be something inherent within themselves. Oh, right. like, yes, yes, yes. Like yes, dragons yes. are naturally assholes. For some reason, <laughs> I don't know, I've always thought about that, like the nature, the things around me. I understand the discussion. Yeah, but it's actually nurture nature. is the things around you. Exactly. Okay, yes, yes, yes. All right, moving on. That thing, the thing <laughs> you have, said. They have a walking speed of 30 feet. Um, and let's, okay, let's just get into it. The change appearance feature, first one listed. As an action, you can change, you can transform your appearance or revert to your natural form. You can't duplicate the appearance of a creature you've never seen, and you revert to your natural form if you die. You decide what you look like, including your height, weight, facial features, and sound of your voice, coloration, hair length, sex, and any other distinguishing characteristics. You can make yourself appear as a member of another race, though none of your game statistics change. You also can't appear as a creature of a different size than you, and your basic shape stays the same. If you're a bipedal, you can't use this trait to become a quadrupe- uh, quad- quadrupedal. Um, your clothing and other equipment does not change in appearance, uh, size, or shape to match your new form, requiring you to keep a few extra outfits on hand to make the most compelling disguise possible. Even to the most astute observers, your ruse is usually indiscernible. If you do rouse the submission, or if a wary creature suspects something is amiss, you have advantage on deception checks to avoid detection. What? Okay. I mean, that's cool. It's really promoting you using the feature. Well, yeah. Yeah, you're. I mean, you are a changeling. No one should be better at, do, at doing this doppelganger shit than you. Not even a wizard with polymorph and all that other stuff. Yeah. Obviously, true polymorph, it's, it's actually true. So. Indiscernible. Yeah, it yeah. is indiscernible. Um, I mean, because there's like the disguise kit thing. Like if you're a bard or whatever and you're right. proficient in disguises. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the changeling should always be better than that. Right. But right. the mentality might be the same. Like it would be cool right. to apply these... Uh, mentalities to NPCs like across your campaign like right. I ran into a bard that was dealing with this like same issue but he's tackling it another way with a fake mustache right right <laughs> <laughs> sure absolutely um, next feature Change, changeling instincts you gain proficiency with two of the following skills of your choice deception intimidation insight or persuasion Nor- as you know I normally don't like this kind of feature in uh, in any of the races but for changelings it is actually perfect yeah, again, it's inherently they're, part they're, of what they're doing. Well, no, it's more along the lines of, again, they are victims of their own environment a lot of the time. So you're going to have this choice between deception, intimidation, insight, and perception, because naturally, inherently, like you're talking about, these are the things you're dealing with. But right. you also get a choice because you're a victim of your environment. Yeah, well, so it's, you're basically, it's tied to your backstory. Yeah, exactly. Exactly so. Uh, the next feature they get is called unsettling uh, visage or visage. When a creature you can see makes an attack roll against you, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the roll. You must use this feature before knowing whether the attack hits or misses. Using this trait reveals your shape-shifting nature to any creature within 30 feet that can see you. And once you use this trait, you can't use it again until you finish a shorter, long rest. So Ooh. basically, when a creature comes to attack you, you basically like transform into something horrific to scare them and throw them off their balance. Yeah, I was going to say, what does this look like? Um, right. Horrific, maybe, but like maybe it could just be... More disturbing. Yeah, where, it can be disturbing. Like, or you like wobble in and out. Like yeah. you become like the, like the, y- you the chain the inherent changeling like the basic form like reveals itself in like a ripple up mm-hmm. your body. That'd like be cool. that would be like jarring. Yeah, like, it would what be. The fuck just happened? Or or whatever's attacking you. Let's say Hank the half orc's attacking you. You change yourself suddenly into Hank the half orc, and he's like, "Holy shit, I'm attacking myself. I this mean, is bizarre." I wonder. If you saw someone with a mask on, I know you, you mentioned like it's not organic, mm-hmm. but that would be terrifying to like transform into something like wearing a mask, like a scary, spooky mask. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Like it's part of your face, though. I mean, also remember, like you aren't limited. To, so, for instance, you can like make it so you don't have a face. Ooh, that's very unsettling. Yeah, you can do, you can do weird, weird horror shit like that. You looked at a skull, one t- a skeleton one time. Right. So nice. this feature is very cool and good. I also find it to be unnecessary because you get a lot of stuff already. You even get another feature. And so it's just like, it's cool. It just seems to be like frosting on top for no reason. When a lot of other races out there probably could have used a little bit more frosting. Okay. But that being said, let's move on. The final feature that you get is called Divergent Persona. 
You gain proficiency with one tool of your choice. Define a unique identity associated with that proficiency. Establish the name, race, gender, age, and other details. While you are in the form of this persona, the related proficiency bonus is double for any ability check you make that uses the proficiency. Now, this is a this feature makes a lot of sense for most changelings, with the exception of the ones that don't use personas. <laughs> oh, yeah. But for the most part, like it would make sense. Like You're usually having to live fake life, so you're going to have proficiencies that you otherwise wouldn't have. It's like we were talking about with the rogue. Like if you want to become a rogue and do rogue shit, you need right. to become your rogue person so you can right. be proficient in rogue stuff. Exactly. Maybe you got the right kinds of fingers for rogan. Right. And then <laughs> lastly, um, for languages, you can speak, read, and write common in two other languages of your choice. I think it should just be one. I mean, you're already getting so much. Why do you get two languages? This is Dungeons and Dragons. Like, well, everybody speaks everything. Well, my point is, okay, so I think the idea here is that, like, well, some changelings have multiple personas, so they should get two languages. Well, that can be taken care of in the background. You're going to oh, gain yeah, languages with their language background. Anyway. Yeah, like, I think for the most part, like, a changeling should get common and then the the main language of whatever their main persona is. So, like, elvish or dwarvish or whatever that is. Maybe it's a more of an optional thing where it's, like, up to the character. Like, I want to be a changeling with that knows lots of languages that can be lots of different personas. This kind of gives you that option. That's true. But, um, or, but, but, I mean, there are features I, that can give you a lot of languages. I mean, I agree with... Or uh, backgrounds, I should I, say. I agree with it being, like... This is that's a lot. I just think it's it, it's why like for why it's just why all this extra. They already get a lot. I think it, it feels like if little. you want to push the extreme of the character, you you have the option to do that. And that's, yeah, that's I, about it. You're though. probably right. I mean, and it's just a language. It doesn't matter. Everyone speaks everything anyway. So. Yeah, exactly. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to, if you if you're not going to dial it up to ten, then like it becomes almost unnecessary for every other changeling. Right. Okay. Well, uh, any questions about changelings? Um, so uh, yeah, I wish they could become centaurs. Is there a changeling, <laughs> is there a changeling race that's, or creature specific to becoming quadruped creatures? No. Yeah. no. Okay. Maybe a doppelganger. Maybe I'd have to look at what a doppelganger can do. I forgot. I, I used them once. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, um, well, with that being said, we can get ready for our long rest. Then. Yeah. Um, let's talk about our discord more. No, let's actually <laughs> talk about TDC plays our gaming channel, which was what we were supposed to, to talk, talk about, about the, the short rest. rest and we just um, didn't, we but didn't. you know, we love the discord. We do. Let's we, talk about we, discord. We no, let's talk about <laughs> TDC plays. So TDC plays is a gaming channel. It's a sister channel to the dungeon cast where we here at the dungeon cast play video games. And, uh, we're really trying to hit a thousand subscribers. So if you like what we do here, you'll probably like what we do there. And you should go subscribe. Help! We're playing Where Smash Brothers. Subs? Yeah, More subs. <laughs> we're playing Smash Brothers. Uh, I think Sonic Mania should be launching pretty soon, if pretty not soon. already is launched by the time this episode airs. Um, I, I, we're doing Undertale. Uh, we're we're about to record the finale of our Pokemon Heart Gold Randomizer Nuzlocke. What a journey! It's been quite the journey. <laughs> um, yeah, it's some badassery going yeah. on. Yeah, and there's been, there's been some tragedy, but we've also built up quite the team. I mean, it sounds like a great story. I think I think it is tragedy and to <laughs> you know you looking like a real contender. Yeah, to we'll, take the championship. We'll find out if we're victorious you next ha- episode. You have, <laughs> uh, you, I mean, I like to name all my um, my characters like when I'm really going for a Pokemon run where mm-hmm. I'm like. Th- in this RPG, mm-hmm. I am mm-hmm. going to become the champion, and that's right. my that's my personal outside the game goal. Even though it's like right. forced upon me in game, yeah, I am going to. So I name all my characters after like, um, like sports winning teams. Like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. I had like a Magic Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, that's really cool. I like that. Yeah. It's really funny. <laughs> um, well, we we named our starter Satan, so yeah, there, that there set the tone for the rest of that yeah. adventure. Um, yeah, and we still have them. He's an evil mob boss. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's basically, we call him the Dark Lord, and he's trying to raise an army to conquer all of Johto. There you go. So See, that the Pokemon is much deeper if you <laughs> let it be deeper. Indeed. With that being said, I think we could call it a game. Let's and call we will it a talk game. talk to you guys Bye. later. How's it go? Hey everybody, welcome to Dungeon Guys. Yeah, that's right. That sounds right. <laughs> I know how I know what I'm doing. <laughs>